Capital, the arena, the place to be in this Saturday night for the Lightning and the Wild. Their second and final regular season get together. Here's tonight's starting goaltenders delivered by Papa John's Pizza. Well, as you pointed out, two big goalies. Camper 6'2", looks a little bigger than that. Ben Bishop looks every inch of his 6'7", but you see the numbers. Both of them have been outstanding for their respective teams. John Cooper behind the bench for the Lightning. And Mike Yo has been behind the bench for a while there. His fourth season with the Wild. He's put them in the playoffs the last two years where they have missed him for quite a while. Top Cal working this game with Jean Hebert. The referees, Darren Gibbs, Pierre Rasico, the linesman. As Mikhail Granlund set to face off against Tyler Johnson. That line the Chief talked about in the open with Andre Palat. On the left, and Nikita Kucherov on the right will begin this game for Tampa Bay, and Palat coming up with that puck immediately. He's checked by Grandlin. Jason Pominville gave it up. Palat got it back to Kucherov, stepping in with Johnson, leaving it. Anton Stroman winds, fires. It's tipped on goal by Johnson, and Kemper right there with a left hand save. Stroman checked at center. Grandlin had it worked away. Comes to Pominville. Parisi with it, had it poked away by Carl. Carl carries to the red line. He'll continue on. Lightning changing behind him. And Thompson will, or Sharpen, Johnson will back in it behind the net. Picked up by Spurgeon. And picked up now by Callahan with a backhand try that's off Kemper at the side of the goal as he held the post. Bombinville tips it out. This will be an icing call, and that Minnesota squad has to stay on. Chris Stingman joining us between the benches tonight. How you doing, guys? And uh, scoring first and getting a good start, oh, so important. Minnesota Wild 8-2 and, and scoring first to Tampa Bay Lightning 9-2-2, two two, so they want to make sure they get off to a good start. Always seems, too, Chris, when they do that, they, uh, they get that sets the tone for their whole game. They struggled a bit in the second periods over the last few games, but it's usually because they haven't been going from the start. Alex Glorn is skating on left wing, taking Valtteri Philpel to spot. Steven Stamkos and Ryan Callahan. And here's Andre Schuster shooting a save by Kemper on the tip by Stamkos out in front. Stamkos gets it. Hacked at by Grandlin. It's fired to the corner. This unit's still on for Minnesota. They really haven't been able to make much of a change. Kalorn absorbs a hit off those boards, leaving it for Callahan. Stamkos takes it. Back to Jason Garrison, who logged better than 25 minutes in Toronto the other night. Stamkos curling it back to the corner. Great possession shift for Tampa Bay here. Let's see if they can get the results they're looking for. Spurgeon desperate to get out. Can't. Garrison, Stamkos out in front, and it was just tipped away from Kalorn. And Niederreiter gets to center. He'll chip it in, and Minnesota desperate for a change. Yeah, you know they weren't going to try and race up the other ice for an offensive thrust, and they've been out there for that long. They just wanted to get it over the red line and get it in. Jonathan Drouin, great move, cuts it, clears, and he did not miss by much. Sent on his way by Brett Conley. Barbario at center. Taken now by Nate Prosser. He's working with Marco Scandella on the Minnesota defense. Puck picked off there by Radko Gudis. Barbario back. He's in for Eric Brewer. Brendan Morrow and Vlad Domestikov, the other healthy scratches, along with the injured Victor Hedman working his way toward the lineup. Hopefully in the next week to 10 days. Keith Ballard pressured in there by Cedric Marquette. Announcing his return to the lineup. Play held in by Strawman, and it's chopped away by Miko Koivu. Here's JT Brown. He's got room down that right side. Fires. Kemper out for the save, and he covers the puck. Well, this is a much better start to the game than we saw in Toronto. This is very similar to what we saw in New York. Take a look at this shot right here. Just missing. On the glove side, and then uh, T.J. Brown had a pretty good chance as well, walking in and went low, and it almost snuck underneath that right pad of Kemper. I guess touched on a little bit, getting a better start, but that stamp coast line, good sustained pressure, and then you build off of that, you get two and three good shifts at the back end of it. Here's a shot by Barbario, and he broke his stick. Didn't get much on the shot. The Wild able to get out to center ice. Here's Thomas Vanek with a pass in front. It's blocked by Barbario. 
And Gunas blasts his way through a stick check. He's met there by Charlie Coyle. Jason Zucker, who was one of their scoring stars in the game in Minnesota in late October, feeding it now to Vanek, and it was broken up. Scandella back down the boards for Coyle. Big centerman, he goes 6'3", 220. Zucker had it taken away. Gunas backhands it away from trouble. No icing as it comes to Kemper. Scandella has scored goals in the last couple of games. Part of this four-game winning streak for Minnesota. And they're figuring out how to win on the road now. Their record at 4-6 and six away from XL Energy Center, where they have been excellent all season. Yeah, they were really a big home-producing team and did not come up with any kind of action on the road until lately. Pass out of the reach of Garrison. Comes back to Jarrett Spurgeon. He's stepping up to work with Ryan Suter. Jonas Brodeen, their outstanding young defenseman, is ill. Here's Stamko shooting at his shot, steered away by Suter. Brodeen has been out with the mumps. They've actually had uh, problems with that. A number of teams have. The Ducks, the Blues have had issues with it. And still a couple of members of the Wild afflicted with the mumps. Well, let's take a look at tonight's keys, brought to you by your Southern Ford dealers. And obviously, from... What we read and heard from the coaches, intensity throughout this game is going to be a very important factor in the success of it. And the puck management, any time that they're really giving that puck away, they're not really controlling the puck, and that includes face-off circles, they don't have their best game. So that's going to be a key for them as well tonight, to be very strong in that area. Conley almost stole the puck from Suter. They do get it out. Valtteri Filpel is centering this line with Drew Amp on the left and Conley on the right. That's a whole different look than what we've seen in recent games with the return of Conley against Toronto. And Philpel, of course, playing that left side with Stamkos. Here's Conley's shot blocked, and Granlin has it. Well, that'll be an interesting guys. line to watch, guys. I like the move, guys. Put a veteran in between a couple young players with a ton of ability. It's interesting because, you know, Drew a self-professed uh, passer as well, so you got two really good passers out there, Coppola and, uh, and Drew, and now he can use that shot of his. Boyle ran over Paquette. Boyle, one of those players who's been ill, they say his issue has not been the months, but he did not finish the game, a 3-2 win in Philadelphia two nights ago. They said he felt better, took the morning skate, and he's back in the lineup. He's their captain. With the buckets, Boyle threw it to the middle of the ice. Scandella's shot is tipped by Brown out of play. That's what we're talking about. When you talk about puck management, that little dump out to the middle there, you got to have that guy there before you make those soft passes. We've come into trouble over the last couple of games where you make those little soft dumps into the middle of the ice where there's nobody there, and that still allows that defense or that forward of the other team to get there a lot faster than the Lightning can. And the Chief, you're also right, recognizing when to make a play and when not to make a play. Thomas Vanek now wearing a wild uniform. That shot is tipped wide by Zucker. And it's played out by Brown. Scandella knocks down the puck. And he's hammered into the boards in a collision with Paquette. That was shoulder to shoulder. And Cedric Paquette got the best of that. He's colliding now with Charlie Coyle. And the puck comes back to the lightning line. Gudis sends it across. But again, Kucherov trying to make his way through that wild defense. Nate Prosser. Plays it out off the stick of Barbario. Gudis fires it ahead. Kucherov relaying it. A lot with a shot. And Andre Palat just sends it wide. Johnson back down the boards. Well, they have that sixth that sense. Don't they go straight They just know who each other is going to be. Here comes Suter. He might play 30 minutes or more in this game. Virgin won't be far behind. There's a shot. Bishop a stop. And that's the first shot for the Wild. A penalty upcoming here against Tampa Bay with Kemper going to the bench for the sixth skater. And the drive by Parisi is knocked right back to him. Suter looking for Parisi. Shooting. Bishop the stop. Hangs on. Now he was collided with by a player coming by the net. And the play is halted. We'll get a penalty called here against Tampa Bay. 
And the Wild with their first chances on Ben Bishop. They'll get a power play in this scoreless tie when we come back. Minnesota said to go on the power play. Andre Schuster off two minutes for a high stick. In the Wild also enjoying a dance trip. A two-game swing to the Sunshine State playing here tonight and Monday against the Florida Panthers. Earlier at this morning, Skate, the dad in their game jerseys sported their son's names and numbers and will enjoy the action from an Amelie Arena suite. We're told there are 34 dads and mentors celebrating the pride they share in their kids growing up to play in the National Hockey League. This entire group on the charter tonight to Fort Lauderdale for that Monday Panther encounter. Uh, this is the third season, Rick and Chief. The team from the Twin Cities is right. Our dad's south here to Florida. Paul, well, thanks very much. Lightning killing a penalty. Andre Schuster off for high sticking. At 7 8 And the Lightning come up with the puck. Tyler Johnson, Andre Pallad open up in the shorthanded unit. And it's Johnson cutting in. Spurgeon has that puck to Grandlin. And out come the Wild on the power play, and this has been a sore spot for them. 10.2%. Here's a shot knocked down in front by Carl. They are 1 for 35 on the road, and that 1 came in their last game against the Flyers on Thursday. Yeah, there's only two teams. It's hard to believe they have a worse percentage than Minnesota. That's Buffalo and Winnipeg, and both of them are under 10%. Lightning on the kill, 80.3%, and as we've been talking about, Alex Kalorn picking up that shorthanded goal in Toronto, the third they've scored in the last nine games. So, Lightning have been more of a threat shorthanded than the Wild have been with the man advantage, but we know the twists and turns of power plays. Well, I'll tell you why, you can get one going in a hurry. Scandella with a shot, knocked down. As Niederreiter out in front, he's got four of their six power play goals this year. And he's a presence around that net. Matt Dumba playing it down the boards. Koivu keeps it moving. Taken by Niederreiter. Koivu. It's in behind the net. Niederreiter gathers it in there. They've got Thomas Vanek around the net. Here's a shot that missed the net. Taken by Gunas. He'll slide it down the ice. Ten seconds left in the penalty. That was the thing about Vanek. He only has scored one goal so far this season. He had nine assists, but the thing it is, that one goal is against the Lightning up here on October 25th. Here's a shot by Keith Ballard, turned away by Bishop. The drive is blocked and Callahan has it. He'll fire it ahead. It deflects to Stamkos. Cuts in, moves to the middle, backhands it just wide. Boy, he got good wood on that shot. Stepping between the two defensemen, just missed the net. Barbario takes it. Stamkos dropping it back, and Strawman's going to pick it up. Strawman, long pass, deflected in by Conley, but Spurgeon recovers it. Lays it out for Zucker. Boyle slowed up, separated from the puck by Strawman, who's made a nice play to Callahan. That was an all-in-one maneuver right there. He stopped the puck carrier, made the hit, got the puck free, and made a play. Stamkos gets it back from Schuster. Left for Conley. Callahan controls it. Carl on with Schuster. Schuster's shot deflected. Conley had it taken away, and Suter knocked it down. Now Carl with it. Schuster with it. Backhands it into traffic. Blocked there by Spurgeon. And away comes Justin Fontaine. Puts on a little burst. Fontaine winding, firing, and it's tipped out of play into the netting by Matt Carl. Well, the shot's four apiece. No score with 9.22 to go here in this first period. Power scoreless here just past the halfway mark of the first period. But this first period is very important for both of these clubs. As you see the numbers, goal differential a little bit favoring the Lightning. A shot total really favoring Minnesota. But look at the records after the leading after the first period. And it's something that uh, you brought up too, Chris, that first goal. Well, both teams have much better one-loss records when they score first. 
Well, scoring that first goal and playing with the lead, and John Cooper's talked about it, that other teams got to change the way they play. It's tougher to play when you're coming from behind. you got to open things up a little bit. Bobbinville just had the puck roll off his stick. Stepping around the lightning net. Back comes Drewan. Going to there by Kucherov at the moment. Here's uh, Strawman down the boards. His pass knocked down by Spurgeon. Down he goes. Strawman gets control. And it comes out of the point. Phil put a covering up there. Kucherov. Now to Strawman shooting. And it was blocked by Suter. He was fronting Jonathan Drewan. Down goes Parisi. Able to maintain control. And the Wild move it out. The Wild giving up only seven first period goals in 18 games. That's pretty good. The Lightning, with their 25, that's that's one of the better totals offensively. So it's uh, presenting a pretty good matchup here in this first period. Really is. And that shot differential, though. Yeah, plus 73 on shots. You can see that they really play on the engine from the stop drop the puck. Yeah, their average is under eight shots against in the first period. The Lightning have four already. Here's Koivu trying to center, blocked by Garrison. Tampa Bay with an early flurry. But Kemper holding the fort for Minnesota. High backhand pass, gloved by Koivu, knocked down by Brown. Montaigne, who played with Brown on an NCAA championship team of the University of Minnesota Duluth, playing that puck in. Well, Minnesota's number two as far as shots on goal averages. The Chicago leads. Minnesota's right behind them, but they're also the best team in giving up the fewest shots. Johnson leaving it out of the reach of Schuster with his reach at 6'8. He was able to keep things moving for Tampa Bay as the Wild trying to bottle up the works in that neutral zone. Hold on, finds a way to head man to Kucherov. Kucherov controls it, feeds it to Garrison, wrist shot, deflected just wide as Johnson had paired off out in front of the goal. He was working there against Prosser. Zucker takes a look, Prosser trying to step up to join him, he'll take it off the boards, bouncing puck, chops at it. Zucker, and deep to his uh, line mates, Boyle and Manick. Away comes Tyler Johnson. Looks for Pollock on the backhand, trying to curl it back in front. He's shouldered to the boards by Ballard. Johnson has it, feeding it. Pollock on the one-timer just missed from a tough angle. Charlie Coyle makes his way to center. Wild will change. Barbario. Paired with Gudis in the Lightning defense. Puck deflected by Kalorn. It ends up on net. And Spurgeon lifting it out to center. Chopped away. Suter has it. Nice pass to Howland. He's wedged off by Gudis. Callahan has caught up to by Eric Calda. The Finnish-born player who played a little bit at uh, the University of Minnesota. And he's another one of those young forwards and young players on this squad who's taken a little time to marinate, Chief. Not unlike the Lightning youngsters, but they're all coming of age, it seems, together. Yeah, that's the thing. They, they don't have a whole lot of young players. they got five, 24 or under. But those are the guys that they're going to start really building their future on. Strawman. Grinding into the zone, lobs it on net, a save there by Kemper. Strawman stays with the play in deep. Randlin. Couldn't get it out of the zone, it's held in by Philpola, the third man high. Strawman firing and it's deflected away, it's chopped now off a stick and out of play. 5.14 to go in a scoreless first period. Now we're scoreless here in the first period. Let's take a look at tonight's Buick big matchup, and it's the career numbers of Thomas Vanek and Jason Pominville. You see the number of games these two have played against the Lightning, and uh, number of points as well. They've uh, been very, very successful. Most of those numbers have come when they were members of the Buffalo Sabres. Just when you thought you couldn't go to a place any colder than Buffalo. I know they've been hit by a lot of snow. <laughs> Did you see there was a news, news, news reporter that put a glass of water on the ground and it froze. 
It's chilly up there, boys. Glad we got that one out of the way in October. <laughs> <laughs> how come the dads, when they do the, the father-son trip, how come they never go to, I don't know, Chief Winnipeg or Western Canada in <laughs> yeah. December, January? <laughs> <laughs> Lightning, I think, have tried to, to have one of those only once, and the reason is that the dads would rather come down and see their sons here at home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where else are you going to go? It's centered in front. Niederreiter tips it just wide. Bishop dropping that stick to make sure he can cover the puck. Well, you can see the shot totals so far in the fishery. Lightning 5-4. Uh, in the lead, but they've had a number of shots that have been blocked or deflected away uh, towards Kemper. And Bishop, uh, not a whole lot of action. And he needs to handle that puck to get himself into this game. Well, something you want to make sure of also, last five minutes of a period, a little bit of snow on the ice, it's a little chipped up. You want to make sure you simplify your game a little bit. Low risk plays. Puck is played right up the middle, and Coyle is forced to center before he can get a hold of it. And Callahan taps it free. He'll take on Ballard. That dump of their first round pick from 2012. Moving it along, and out comes Coyle. Zucker with a try, and it's deflected away by Bishop. Kalorn, his pass. He had Callahan going one way, the pass went the other. Prosser back to Vanek, pulls the trigger. It's blocked by Kalorn. Loose at the side of the goal. Stamkos gets his stick on it. He swerves out of the zone, picking up speed, got a hand with him, Scandella blocked the pass, Buck came up and hit him in the face, it looked like he remains out there as the Wild will send it off the boards and back toward Bishop. Lightning getting in very late from Toronto the other night, here's a steal by Granlin as he took it away from Carl, driven on goal by Parisi and a save by Bishop. And uh, John Cooper had a a decision to make. I give my team my rest as they get the rest as they got in at uh, about four o'clock in the morning from Toronto the night before, or put him on the ice. And he had him on the ice in a video session as well late yesterday afternoon. But that's a tough balance again, Chief. It really is, and I think he had to he had to get him on the ice because there was too many things creeping into their game the last two. That they had to work on it, try and get it out. The back and black four-game plan presented by Chase scores you any four Saturday home games and a free Ryan Callahan Reebok official player t-shirt. Call 813-301-6600 or visit TampaBayLightning.com. That's the thing. When you're not playing, or pardon me, when you're playing a lot of games, like three and four nights, four and six nights, you don't get a whole lot of time to practice. And when you get some trends creeping into your game that you don't like to see, you don't have the time to work on it. Well, hockey 101, when you have a day off or a couple days in between games, you make sure you play well that last game. This is the 10th game for the Lightning in a span of 17 days, so it's been pretty busy here after a very mild first week of the month of November where they had a four-day layoff, and now they have one game in six days after tonight. Of course, hosting the Rangers on Wednesday night. Paquette with a big hit down low and a steal by J.T. Brown. Shooting deflected by Kemper. It's loose in front. And Ryan Carter got a hold of it. It's played out. Schuster starts it back in. Lobs one on goal and it's gloved by Kemper as Schuster was looking for some traffic to develop. Cedric Paquette and Nito Niederreiter introduce each other. You can show your support by donating it all. Neither one of these teams are known for being any kind of a, a raspy team. <laughs> They're not one of those ones that get chippy at all. It's interesting to see that happening there, but he'd rather skate, make the plays. So they'll take the body, but you don't see too many guys getting that chippy up there. Well, good job by that line, just getting the puck in deep, and Cedric Pogget getting physical, creating turnovers, and going to the net. They can get him out of there. We talk about that a lot, Chief, clearing the front of our net. They can clear him out of front of their net. Yep. Puck stolen by Drouin. We saw Mike Yo there a minute ago. He's made one change from their winning lineup in Philadelphia. That was Kyle Brodziak coming in for Stu Bickle, who's uh, normally a defenseman, but has been playing up front and not playing much. Rick Bonus, Lightning associate coach, had indicated this morning that because of 
That late arrival from Toronto and the heavier schedule, they might use four lines and try to roll some lines and spread the ice time around, keep everybody fresh, and maybe Yo's anticipating that. In putting a, a regular forward in in Brodziak. They'll stay tuned to the Gulf Coast Honda Dealers first to division report. As uh, Paul Kennedy will visit with Valtteri Philpola outside the Lightning dressing room. And uh, we'll present an interview with uh, Zach Parisi. Highlights and stats as well. Coming up. Might have spoken a little too soon about that chippiness, guys. I just saw Niederreiter getting really impatient with the back checking of, uh, of Conley. And he came a little shot there before the whistle was blown. Gudis winds his way through into the zone, dropping it back down and shooting blockered away by Kemper. And the Wild will play it out to center ice. Lightning looking to re-enter. Kalorn slips into stamp, goes, he'll drive one. That was muted by Suter, taken by Kalorn. Boyle battling to get position on him. Boston University versus Harvard there. Callahan out to the point. Barbario with the shot, that's blocked. It's in the equipment of Zucker and he can't shake it loose. Barbario tried to do him a favor <laughs> and shake it loose and stuck at his pants. <laughs> Seen it all this year, guys. Well, you've, been doing the, you've been doing games for a long time, Chief. But saw a goal go in off the back of a skate that was tucked in there with Callahan. I never saw that before, Dish. I'll tell you that. That's the first I've ever seen. Saw a goaltender make a save holding his head on the back of the crossbar. There it is right there. It's amazing when the puck's coming in. It must just ricochet straight up. Yeah. The pants. You'd think it would come in from the top. But not so fast, Kowalski. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're chipping. It's all about the spin you put on it. Yeah. The old hidden puck trick. A minute to play here in this first period. Wilder whistled on the offside. Sports fans, there's a new way to get all your Florida sports gear. Introducing TampaBaySports.com. Your new online store to get Lightning, Bucks, Rays, Bulls, Gators, and Seminoles merchandise. I think when you take a look at this period, it, it all has been better than the last two first periods. Much more intense. Kucherov getting it to Palat. Back to Kucherov. Closely checked in that zone, and Scandella just sends Palat turtling into the boards. Palmaville ahead for Grandlin. Joined by Scandella on the rush. Now Palmaville turning it now to Parisi. Shooting off the post. It got by Bishop on the long side, but hit the goal post. And Palat has it. 23 seconds remaining in the period. Both teams making changes here for the final shift. Strawman and Carl moving ahead. JT Brown, look out. He tried to play it off the boards and in. It ends up over the wild bench and out of play. I don't think Daryl Sador, your old teammate, Chris, was interested in blocking a shot there. <laughs> no, it's always funny. JT Brown kind of gave the old apology there. Daryl Sador, great guy. You guys talk about it quite a bit. What a pickup by Jay Feaster. Calming influence veteran on the back end. Still can't get used to that short hair, glasses, and no mustache. <laughs> Gotta grow up sometime, guys. <laughs> Puck hits Brown, and we get a hand pass indicated with one second to go. With the shots at 8-7 Tampa Bay. They had a, a good start. The Wild, one of the better defensive teams in the league. Calming things down in their own zone. And from a drop of the puck, we get a horn, and that will do it for the first 20 minutes here at Amelie Arena. In this matchup, Valtteri Filpola shortly will join Paul Kennedy, so stay tuned for that as he centers a new line tonight. No score, Lightning and Wild after one.
first 20 minutes of fans finding their seats once again for the start of second period action here at Amelie Arena. Rick Peckham and the Chief Bobby Taylor up here in the booth. And uh, Chief, the Lightning trying to find the winning formula again. And a team like the Wild, they'll they'll get your attention because you've got to play sharp against them if you're going to get that win. Yeah, you got to be very disciplined. you got to play in your lane. I think you can't really warm them too often because they stay wide. They, they, they really make sure that you have to really work to get to the front of the net and work to get rebounds. And that's a good thing because Lightning have to get that ethic back in their game. As they grind it out here with the Wild and look at the chase review, you and the shots not many of them very uh, evenly distributed and you can see the other numbers uh, pretty even as well block shots seven apiece lightning with an edge of the face-off circle a good side there and really chief you know we've seen the lightning a little off their game on a few nights we've seen them play opponents who in their previous games had been off their their games a little bit so they've been fired up there's not much difference between most of the teams in this league and if you're just not at your best sometimes teams are going to pick you off and goaltending basically you're right and uh you know I, I think when you take a look at all the frontline players is how well you can handle injuries your depth is going to be very important but uh you're right there's an awful lot of evenly matched teams Right away here in the second. Brandlin tried to tip the puck in. He's got time to shoot it in. And Bishop, Carl, and out comes Andre Pallad. Across for Nikita Kucherov against Suter. Dropping it off for Strawman. It's it back. Here's a shot that deflects just wide from a sharp angle. Taken by Pallad. Kucherov pulls the trigger. Missed the net. Suter chopped it away. And Kucherov, a good play to hold it in against Parisi. Wild come up with it, and it's moved to Mikhail Grandlin. Their first round pick from 2009. Garrison right there to keep him away from the net. They're forced to center. Nate Prosser had been with the organization, ended up signing with St. Louis as a free agent. They put him on waivers early in the season, and the Wild grabbed him back. Pass ahead for Nita Ryder. Joining the attack, Scandella. Fontaine's shot is knocked down. He overskates it. Schuster gets rid of it. Yes. They have four of their first round picks on their roster. Of course, one of them, Boudin, is not here because of that illness. But we have Koivu, Granlin, and Dumba. Here's Koivu shooting, and he missed. Glove side of Bishop. Prosser holds it in. Fowler drives it back into the attacking zone. Wilder changing, and Garrison saw that looking over his shoulder. Schuster's pass ahead for Kalorn. Hands it off now to Callahan. Check from behind by Zucker. And Callahan got it free. Somehow Zucker avoided a hooking penalty there. Yeah, he got him on the hands and everything. Here's Callahan moving to the slot. Check by Ballard. And it's back into the head. Knocked down by Barbario. Coyle grabs the puck, starts it in. Sends it off the side of the goal as he tried out muscle Gudis. Gudis hooking it out of Brown. Three on two for the Lightning. Brown with Stamkos and Kalorn, and the play just goes offside. Chris joining us between the benches. Chris Dignan and... Uh, what did you see in that first period that looked encouraging for the Lightning to carry over? That absolutely did look encouraging. The skating, the speed, the tenacity. I guess we touched on a little bit in the pregame about second periods being a problem for the Lightning as of late. You notice that first shift of the period, Anton Stroman and company got off within 34 seconds. So keeping it short because you don't want to get stuck out there. That's something that Rick Bonus talked about today when asked about how does Strawman manage his minutes in such a busy schedule and night after night? He's been playing more minutes lately, 24-25, as here's a try by Eric Howlitz, knocked down by Bishop, and the rebound cleared to the boards. And Bonus said he really manages his game, manages his ice time. He doesn't get himself in uh, tough situations where he has to work every as hard all the time. He's very efficient in how he skates and plays out there. And he also knows when to change at the right time. 
changing so important, touching on that, Rick, changing to the right time, is that you get caught out there for an extended shift, your legs are done for a couple shifts. And open in front is Pavadil to Parisi. He scores. You can't keep turning that puck over in your own zone. The Lightning for three games now have not been able to make that play the easy play. They go back into the middle and they get the puck taken away and that's results in the first goal of the game. Watch the play along. This is the tail end of it, but it happened way up there. They had two guys four feet from the blue line. You try to go through the middle. You just can't make a play when there's nothing there. You've got to understand that. And there you have it. Nobody picked up Parisi. He was all alone. And you touched on it, Chief. Sometimes your best play is just off the glass and out, keeping it out of the middle and off a turnover. Nice little give and go. No chance for Ben Bishop. Thomas Vanek making that play at the side of the goal to Parisi. He scores his seventh goal of the season. He missed five games with a concussion. He back a couple of games ago and had two goals. Virgin did not keep it in. Play forced to center. Now it's lifted ahead by Johnson. Out of play, but he did so from center. So that will not result in a penalty. When you're in a tightly fought game such as this one, well, you know there's not a whole lot of space out there. Both teams are not giving it much. You've got to keep the game simple. You can't make those fancy plays or the possession plays. There's just times when you're not being able to do it. That's recognizing that. That's one of the reasons you, or one of the reasons things that you have to do. And you, you got to live with that sometimes with a young team, but you've got to make sure that they don't do it. They've been doing it all for three games. Johnson shot is tipped by Suter out of play. I had to that, Chief, also, is just recognizing when to make a play and when not to make a play. And, you know, the old ill-advised cross-ice pass. Get the puck out of the middle. These two teams are kind of interesting, though, when you take a look at uh, Tampa's average age on defense is at 27 years. Minnesota's average age at defense is 25.6, so they're, most of their youth is on the back end. Now it reverses when it goes to the forwards. The Lightning average about 24 years, just under uh, 25 for forwards, and Minnesota's up over 27 years. So they've got older forwards, younger defense, Lightning, younger forwards, older defense. Well, it helps when you got an older guy who plays 30 minutes a night like a yeah. suitor. <laughs> Vanek the only assist on the Parisi goal at 3-11 of the second period. Gudis. Moving that puck to Brett Conley. Rifles it around. It's by Dump at the center. Howla had it checked away by Filpola. He cuts in. Filpola in the backhand. The shot was slowed down there by Scandella. Rodziak getting it ahead to center. Howla reaching for it. Now to Scandella. And the Wild are offside. For a Little Caesars family fun pack for all Saturday home games. Packages include four tickets, four pizzas, four ice creams, and four sodas. For as low as $100, buy now at tampabaylightning.com slash tickets. Hasn't been really any oh wow plays really for this game thus far. 18 shots total. Now one goal by Minnesota is on a turnover, but you know the goalies haven't been called on to really make a big save yet. Randlin deflects the puck in. Bishop sends it back up the boards. Randlin held there by Kalorn. Wild get it loose. Parisi with a shot, and it's deflected out of way. Uh, out of play by Matt Carl. See if you touch on goaltenders not having to make too many tough saves. Off that last turnover in Val Philpola. The play before, a good stick on Minnesota Wild defenders. That's the thing, you know, you, you, you're going to... That give and go is where you got to really watch it, too, especially with guys like Suter out there and, and uh, Greasy. They really work that give and go well. Suter able to hold it in for a moment. Comes to center. Taken back by Vanek. Boyle. Down the board. Schuster there. Lays it now to Garrison. Out comes Stamkos. And he had it chopped away by Coyle. Now Stamp goes pressuring, Spurgeon cuts up with the puck, cuts in front, and he couldn't split the defense to get the shot on goal. Callahan picks up the puck, back out to Schuster with the shot, and it's knocked down by Coyle. He was helping out in front of the net, Lightning come up with the puck, and it's taken back by Spurgeon. 
Vanek bats the puck out of the air and down the ice. We'll get an icing call against Minnesota. Well, Tampa Bay Lightning Hockey and Sun Sports is brought to you by Patrick's. Great spot, as we to point out to you time and time again about starting the off your evening here. Go to Hatchet and then they get there as well. And we talk so much about the shake and bake wings. They also got big wings. That's a pretty delicious treat as well. Hatricks. That's where the party starts, and that's where the party can end. Boyle ahead to Zucker. Bishop wants to play this puck. As the Wild were changing and Bishop looking up ice for that long stretch pass. But the opportunity didn't present itself. Pass to Kucherov taken over by Fontaine. Fontaine from the angle shooting and it's gobbled up by Bishop. Well, you got to be a patient team right now. This pass is through the middle and Ben and Strawman are just talking with one another about that play. He was going to try and get it up there but Strawman was right there. Had he shot the puck, he would have hit Strom and had a good chance to go into the open side of the net. Well, something Lightning like to do a lot of is fire that puck up, go forward to the middle of the ice, and then release it to the outside. And so Wild have done a good job of adjusting to that. Ryan Boyle wins the faceoff back to Schuster. Around for JT Brown. It's by his stick. Crosser in a race here with Paquette. And it's taken by Brown. He's checked by Koivu. Brown gets a hold of it. Schuster stepping into the zone. Handled by Kemper. He'll hang on to it. First shot for Darcy Kemper. Here in the second period, just past the six-minute mark. Zach parisi has got the Wild on the board, 1-0. With the legendary Scotty Bowman looking on this evening, a part of this great Saturday crowd, Zach Parisi with the one and only goal in our hockey game. Earlier today on Twitter, Scotty Bowman offered a touch of sentimentality, tweeting to all of us that it was 47 years ago this very day, November 22nd, 1967, that he was elevated to the head coaching job of the St. Louis Blues, his very first assignment, and thus launched the most successful coaching career in NHL history. He was 34. His next three Blues teams, Rick and Chief, went to the Stanley Cup Finals, captained by Al Arbor. He won nine Stanley Cups as a coach, five with Montreal, one with Pittsburgh, three with Detroit. And uh, we are honored that Scotty Bowman is here almost every night from the perch above the ice at Amelie. Paul, thanks very much. As Bishop holds play, Minnesota's been kind of an odd team so far this year. They got, their wins and losses have come in bunches. They won three in a row, and then they've uh, lost four in a row. Now they're currently on a four-game winning streak. Well, I'm sure Coach Mike Yo would like to see it a little bit more consistently than that, but nonetheless, their record, 11-7, uh, 22 points. Twitter with a shot, a stick saved by Bishop, and the rebound... Is out in front, but the Lightning with plenty of people there for it. Truhan firing at it. Blocked by Spurgeon. Back comes Parisi for the Wild. Carl there defensively. Pass across for Grand. Looks out of the goal. Bishop a save as he makes the stop on Pommetville. Quick pass to Pommetville at center. He'll flip it toward the corner. Wild go for a change. I think one shot, the Wild six so far here in the second period. Kucherov getting to it for the Lightning. In front for Pallad, he couldn't get organized for the shot. He had a little room for a moment. Here comes Vanek steaming down the wing. Steps around Schuster, who got the puck away from him, and Bishop had to turn it aside to keep it out of Vanek's reach. Well, you gotta take the body all the time. They keep putting that stick out there when you need to, but the body has to follow. Boyle steals, ends up with its side of the goal. Zucker in front with the Lightning closing ranks and stealing. Pallott lobs it across. It's behind Kucherov. He'll let it go. Lightning tag up. Play continues. Garrison picks it up. Going to lose Charlie Coyle. He was a first-round pick of San Jose who came to the Wild in the Brett Burns deal. Here's Pallott across for Kucherov. Closely checked, and that's pretty much been the story of this game. Johnson out of Kucherov. 
Johnson fires in front. It's off Dumba skate. It comes out to center. Minnesota's gap control has been very good. They haven't allowed the Lightning too much easy entry into their blue line. And they've really taken away the play through the neutral zone. He goes Koivu. Down he goes behind the net. Justin Fontaine with him. Fontaine steps in front. Shot was snuffed out by Gudis who just shoved him out of there. Clears the zone. It's amazing when you take the body and you come up with a puck. Does the Lightning really have to simplify their game right now? Keep the puck out of the middle. Down the wing. The Bishop is saved there. The pass back out of the wing for Stamkos. He swings in. Back in it in deep in the zone for Ryan Callahan. Checked by Spurgeon. Spurgeon dug it loose. Niederreiter stepped into by Strawman. That slows him up. Suter with a pass. It's off Fontaine's stick. Just about nine minutes have been played here in the second period. Lightning with one shot. That's how tough Minnesota's been at their blue line. Look at that. Every time they just steal that puck and don't prevent the Lightning to get in. Well, you wonder what uh, is driving the Wild here. They get the four-game winning streak. Here's Stamkos joined now by Strawman. Dumba got it away. They allowed Philadelphia 39 shots the other night. Kemper came up with 37 saves in backstopping what turned out to be a 3-2 win. Jason Zucker with a winning goal in the final minute of play. And as Chief noted, they don't give up many shots. They've only been averaging about 23 against on average and gave up 39 on Thursday as we look at their four-game winning streak. Yeah, you see that those uh, nine goals against him for, but the power play is much better, as you pointed out, Rick, but the, and the belly kill has been strong all season long, but what has impressed me, especially in this second period with the long change, is um, they have really just clawed that middle, and they have really made the play at their blue line or just before the blue line, really limiting the access to their zone from before the lightning. You look at it every time. Tampa Bay Lightning trying to bring the puck in with speed. Four or five guys back for the Minnesota Wild. Lightning got to recognize that. Chip the puck down the boards. When that happens, you know, that's the thing. That D can stand up there. Even yep. They've got to do that. Lightning will get their forwards back, but they'll still back off that blue line on occasion. Mike Yo in his fourth year as uh, head man here in Minnesota. They missed the uh, playoffs the first year. Made the playoffs the last couple. Won a series over Colorado last year. Here's Parisi shooting a save by Bishop, and he controls that puck to get a whistle. I'll tell you what, it's... 9-1 shots on goal favoring the, the Wild. Take a look at that pass right there quickly. That, that's just a heads-up play by Parisi. Just that veteran experience. Sucha caught himself a little bit too close to the wall with that great tarum coming off to Parisi in the middle of the ice. And he's always scored well against the Lightning. That goal is 25th point in 28 games. Of course, uh, much of that damage done as a member of the New Jersey Devils. Here comes Kucherov, dropping it back, Pilot fires, and it's just tipped away. Good opportunity there for the Lightning. As Ballard gets it up the boards and down the ice, an icing call against Minnesota. They haven't been shy about dumping it out or icing it either. They probably have had more icings than the Lightning, but they don't want to get any sustained pressure. They saw that in the first four or five minutes of the opening period where the Lightning had that one line on for a good minute seemed like and they really had the puck control but they're better to get things all calmed down and start out all over again Johnson a face off with a shot by Kucherov and it's snared there by Kemper with the lightning contesting Darcy Kemper there they're down one nothing here in the second one nothing Minnesota here's tonight's great moment in hockey history brought to you by Geico on this date in 1986 Wayne Gretzky scored his 39th career hat trick to give him 500 career goals in just his 575th NHL game. 13 years later, on the same date, he was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame just seven months after retiring, bypassing the traditional three-year waiting period. Let's get him in there. <laughs> you probably could have got him in there before he even finished replaying. <laughs> Is that good? Cool. Amazing. Talk up, yeah, we talk about vision on the ice and anticipation. I don't think I've ever seen anybody that has it like him. 
Pleasure to watch him growing up, boys. Johnson stopped there by Kepper. Yeah, Chris, growing up in Edmonton, you got a chance to meet him when you were a young kid, right? I did, yeah. Broke my leg skiing, hit a tree, which explains a lot about my personality, but one of the best guys. Never turned down an autograph. And great player, great person, and watching those guys play, oh my goodness. Boylu dumps it in. Garrison back. Schuster. Trying to get it up the boards. He's tied up there by Koivu. Puck comes down to Palmetville. Scandella with a drive. He missed the net. Garrison has Pallant waiting in left wing. Inside nine minutes to go in the second. Stepping up Prosser from his defense position. Pallant back for Schuster. You ever notice how many times guys take a run at Pallant and they get so surprised when they don't move him? <laughs> on the one touch, Callahan fires, save by Kepper. It looked like it might be heading over his shoulder. It was knocked to the ice, and he was able to cover it up. Well, they're starting to get some action in and around on him now. The key thing of it is, it's all been first shots. Here's that quick shot. You see it. Try to go high. Try to get it up a little bit higher than that. He made a nice save with the blocker, but wasn't able to tip that puck in, too. He had to wait for a while. By that time, the defense had got back there very quickly. Nate Prosser. Well, don't discount the play by Granlin there, too, on Callahan, because he was set to bat that in out of midair. And uh, I would like his chances there if he had the stick free. Yeah. Stamkos. Swinging wide on Suter, who got a piece of that pass. Strawman. Right down the middle of the ice. Goes forehand. He's taken down there. And a penalty upcoming. Ryan Carter will go. First penalty against Minnesota. Way well, was looking, it looked like it was not hey, going to be one of those games. Come on, fucking. Where the visiting team would have had a penalty free game, but right there is where the nice moves by Strawman. Great poise with the puck as well. But you know what that is right there? Confidence. I didn't think he'd do that last year. A ton of confidence shown by Anton Strawman, especially at the blue line, making that move going around. Lighting of the power play a little better than 22%. Seventh in the rankings. The Wild very sharp on the kill. 88.1%. Fifth in the rankings. So quality matchup here. A very good power play, particularly on home ice for the Lightning, where they're 27%. And the Wild on the BK. They're very good in the faceoff circle when they're shorthanded. They win a ton of their faceoffs then. Lightning gain entry into the zone. Garrison. Wilpel gets set up. Conley's in the slot with Callahan. Stamp goes winding. Firing off the shoulder of Kemper and it deflects out of play. Well, they got him listed at six foot two, Kemper, but he looks a lot bigger. Six, excuse me, six five. I was looking at Backstrom's number, but you can see where he really covers the top part of that net well. Uses those arms very well. Well, he was thrown into duty in a first-round Stanley Cup series a couple of years ago when Nicholas Backstrom pulled a groin muscle in the warm-up of Game 1 against Chicago. It was a few lessons learned the tough way for Kepper, but he has developed into a fine young goaltender at the age of 24. Garrison handing it out of Stamkos. Marches in. His try was blocked by Spurgeon. Finally retrieving a stick. Yeah, Brodziak dunked it out of his hand. Puck deflected by Callahan. Callahan has it. By well, round to Garrison. Back for Callahan. Checked by Spurgeon as well as Suter. Conley arrives in there. 40 seconds to go on the penalty. Garrison with it. Phil Plum. They've got Conley in front of Kemper. Bilpola looks that way. Now Callahan trying to get it in front, deflected into the goal now that comes out to Garrison, bounced away from him. Stamp 
Stamkos has to wait for the zone to clear. Re-enters. 16 seconds on the penalty. Stamkos controlling it. Joined now by Strawman off the bench. Back to Stamkos. Wants that wrist shot. He scores! Through the Callahan screen. He's tied it up. Thirteen forty-two. Watch the play. He really is being hammered and, and pulled away by Brodjack, who has really been a, on Stamkos most of this power play. But what can where Callahan gets right in front there? And when you're not seeing the puck, the key thing of it is you've got to be able to find it coming off the stick of the of the player shooting it. He couldn't find it soon enough. Dropped a little too late, and Stamkos ties this game. Good job by starting that play and ending that play, going up to the blue line, getting lost, and getting it back from Anton. Strong. Now, depending on what happens in a busy afternoon and evening in the National Hockey League, Stamkos could, at this point, be tied for the goal-scoring lead in the NHL with Tyler Sagan at 14 goals now. Boyle stepped in front of Bradley, cleared that zone. Stammer's fifth power play goal as well. That puts him one off the lead. Joel Giroux has six. Parisi checked along the boards by Boyle. Lightning lifted by that goal. They're offside. Brown was in the zone, but the Wild moving ahead to Pominville, dropping it back. Parisi with it, sends it toward the net. It's blocked in front. And a good job by Strowman to tie up Pominville. Ballard cranks one wide. Comes out to Dumba. And behind a coil. Outmaneuvers Boyle. Dumba fires it off the end boards, containing the play. JT Brown gets it, trying to softly chip it out to avoid icing. And the Lightning with Puckett, gloving it out, get the job done. It is Stamkos' goal, his 14th, his sixth in the last eight games. Pallant ahead for Kucherov. Johnson feeding it through, it's on goal, a save by Kemper. As Kucherov was reaching in there for the tip. Now this line goes to where Kucherov the drive. Loved by Kepper. He wants to bring a halt to things with 4.39 to go. In the second period, the crowd lifted. The lightning lifted. Stamkos with the tying goal of the power play. Well, Steven Stamkos is 14th of the year. tied this game at 13.42. You take a look at the season split as you see in those wins. 20, or 30 points, rather. And just two in the eight losses the Lightning have suffered. And the big difference in the uh, plus-minus as well. But that on the power play, nine power play points in the win. Can't overlook the Lightning's defensive efforts tonight with Ben Bishop in goal because Minnesota, in their wins, is averaging almost four goals a game in offense. And when there's seven losses, they've scored a grand total of nine goals. So... Right now they only have one, so that has spelled quite a difference for them. Here's Kucherov, next down a bouncing puck. Pallant out of the corner trying to make a play. Of course you're going to score more in your wins than your losses, but that's quite a dramatic difference. It really is. Pallant, Kucherov pulls the trigger, blocked, he gets it back, hands it now, Johnson has stop, and it's played away by Coyle. That line is heating up. Bishop, out for Kucherov. Zucker took it away. Kucherov blocks the pass. Drew out. On now, the Lightning trying to change. Barbario oodles the room, fires, and Kemper way out to make the save. Covers the puck. Yeah, one of the few times they really got inside that zone unattested. There is a big shot from Barbario, but look at Kemper while well out there on the angle, making sure that... He was square to the puck. Good shift by the kid line. Dude, Kucherov, one of the best in the business in finding those open seams and stick handling in the phone booth there, boys. <laughs> Taking the puck to the net. You know what's amazing, too, uh, Dish, is the way he has, he's able to control bouncing pucks. He really has a great eye-hand coordination to control bouncing pucks. You know, take a pass in stride and great bounce. Strawman and Garrison assist on the Stamkos power play goal at 13:42, 
And we're tied at one. Schuster playing that puck to Jason Garrison. Prosser with it. Finds Koibu. Peter Ryder stood up by Schuster. That's what you gotta do. You gotta make that play. Get up right in their face quickly. Get your stick out there, but you gotta take the body as well. Schuster with it. Over the stick of Conley down the ice. The Arasico waves off icing. Just over three minutes to go here in the second period. Lightning with momentum off that power play goal. And you see their, their game has been lifted a bit. They get a whistle here in the offside. And guys, I mean, after, uh, we'll get into that in just a second. Let's take a look at the Lightning's upcoming schedule presented by Steak and Shake. Well, you see the next Wednesday, uh, you see Marty St. Louis to return with the Rangers. And then the day after Thanksgiving, Ottawa's in town. And the Lightning will quickly go up to New York. The Rangers again, and then Buffalo back to back before they come back down here for some more. Couple of losses for the Lightning. Seeping a little confidence there where that's now restored by that power play to get that sense. I think so, yeah. You, you, you take the, a little bit of your panic or urgency away. Stamp goes behind the Minnesota defense. And they just missed him on the pass. The special team's oh so important against a team like Minnesota Wild that is playing so good defensively. Callahan tees it up and shoots, and it's tipped away by Suter. Had that stick in the way, and eight or ten situations in this game. Strawman doesn't have a shooting angle. Matt Carl back to Strawman. He'll let it rip. It's deflected and blocked by Suter. Lightning come up with it. Stamp goes. Force to the boards. Join. A bear is trying his best to get out of the way. Great battle along the boards. Won by Alex Kalorn. Here's the shot. They score! A board battle won by Kalorn. The Lightning lead it to the one. 18-07. What puck retrieval is all about. Making sure he was out at the blue line a couple of times. And you see Callahan, Kalorn, and I don't know sure if it hit anything. Oh, it looked like it went off the skate of Kalorn. So maybe he might get the, the goal, but if that's the case, it's Callahan and Strowman on the assist. But nonetheless, it was all set up by him keeping that play inside at the blue line. Uh, Anton Strowman. Kucherov offside. Who knows, maybe Alex Kalorn's a big fan of MC Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're going to play it every time he's on the ice. Anton Strawman, guys. The puck poise he has back on the blue line, I know you guys have talked about it quite a bit. He made an unreal D-to-D -D play, and then jumping in again, he caused that power play by taking the puck to the net. That's what probably impresses everybody so much, uh, is his poise and patience with the puck. A lot of guys panic back there, especially in the opposition's blue line. He has yet to get the street cred of a Ryan Suter, but we're seeing a display. Suter on one side and Strowman on the other of maximum efficiency. And excellent defensive play for both of them. Here's a shot handled by Bishop, and he'll hang on on the try by Niederreiter. Stay tuned for the Gulf Coast Honda Dealer's second intermission report. Here's what's coming up. Paul Kennedy with Steven Stamkos. And we'll meet tonight's community hero, Chris Digman, joining Paul for highlights and stats. Keith and I will have our say from the first two periods of this game as well. Boy, when Greasing scored that goal to open up the scoring, that was like the seventh second period goal that the Lightning had given up in the last three games. Ricky touched on. With a shot Ooh. saved by Bishop. Boyle lets it go. Touched on Anton Strawman and the boys. Remember last year injury to Steven Stamkos. That's when Tyler Johnson, Andre Clark, got a lot more ice time. So guys get injured, other guys get more ice time. <laughs> Now we've got a check 
into the boards here. Stamkos is decked into the boards by Suter, and the Lightning object to that. We're going to get a penalty to Ryan Suter off that check. Kalorn gets credit for the goal. There's the cross check from behind into the boards. That's not even with your shoulder. Twenty, it's two minutes for cross checking. Players kicked out of games for less than that. Nonetheless, the Lightning will get the second power play of the game as well as this period when they get 19:01. in his face-off. Filpola. Back of the point for Garrison. And behind the Callahan. Under a minute to go here in this second period. The Lightning with a couple of goals later in the second period. A chance to add to it. But now here comes Brodziak for Minnesota. Shooting high off the chest of Bishop. He'll hang on to it. Scorn Alley got uh, a disturbance going in that slot with Prosser and Callahan drawing at each other. Lawrence scoring in his fourth consecutive game with his fifth goal on that deflection. Well, Prosser's been in the middle of it all night. Roman and Callahan get the assist at 18.07. Sixth goal for Kalorn. Well, something they're talking about, guys. End of the period, a lot of snow. Ice not so good. Got to be 100%ers, as we like to call them. No hopeless. <laughs> I think coaches hate to see those hope plays right from the first start with the ice is fresh. <laughs> well, even more so. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. talk about it even more. I know, but you find those hope plays a little more often. <laughs> oh, they drive you crazy. Put the blood pressure up. <laughs> 25 seconds to go in the period. This penalty will obviously overlap by about a minute unless the Lightning capitalize. Here's Phil for the lane. Bounces off the Koivu check. They both missed the Olympics for Team Finland with injuries. Garrison at the point. Shooting deflected. It's blocked out in front by Spurgeon. He's their leading shot blocker. At only five foot seven, Philpola re-enters and time runs out. 102 remaining on the penalty to Suter. And Steven Stamkos igniting his team with a power play goal, scoring from Strawman and Garrison at 13.42, his 14th, the tie for the league lead. Alex Gallorn scoring in his fourth consecutive game from Strawman and Callahan. About four and a half minutes later, and Tampa Bay's got a lead of two to one through 40 minutes. Tampa Bay Lightning Hockey and Sun Sports is brought to you by Gulf Coast Honda. Visit your Gulf Coast Honda dealers for great deals on new Hondas. Go to gchondadealers.com. By Kaiser University. Over 90 programs online and on campus. Learn more at kaiseruniversity.edu. And by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. Look at the Florida Aquarium just down the street. From Amelie Arena, where the Lightning have a 2-1 lead after 40 minutes of play over the Minnesota Wild, a very formidable opponent that's a seen to be carrying the day for about half of this game, or at least into halfway uh, through that second period. Chief, the Lightning turning it around. They've been excellent at protecting leads in the third. What are the elements of that successful uh, formula for that? Well, I think patience and also a really aggressive forechecking and a really assertiveness on the puck carrier, and I think that's what they, uh, they really have done very, very well in the third period. And they had to be a little bit more patient in this game tonight than we had. They've had to be over the last few games. Let's have a look at the chase review. Through uh, 40 minutes, Lightning waiting quite a while to get things going offensively in the second sheet. Yeah, they they seem to be getting the shots on goal. They, they, th as we pointed out, Rick, they had 10 to 1 shots the last half of that period. They were down 9 to 1 in shots, and they really had nothing going. That power play kind of turned them on. That goal really sparked them, and then Kalorn picks up that other one. But I think now when you when you get that confidence level and, you, and it comes up and down as the game progresses, but they're really, 
uh, a better team, obviously, when they're more, more, more confident. But it's amazing why one goal will do for you. Right, Chris? Absolutely, that one goal, and he touched on a little bit. You want to get that extra one and a good start to this period. And Atif, I know you're not a big fan of splitting up the power play, but the way the ice looked at the end of the second, I'll take this clean sheet for the power play to start the third. 102 to go on the penalty to Suter. As he's in the box for cross-checking, the Lightning have Conley, Philpola, Callahan across the front, Stamkos and Garrison at the point positions as they'll start from their own zone. Carter and Howlett up front as the penalty killers for the Wild. Kemper out to fire that buck up the boards. Didn't get much on it. Conley slows it down. And the Wild get a hold of it, clear it out. So far in this power play, the Wild are the only ones that has a shot on it. And Highwood, remember, they came up real quickly on uh, Bishop. But backhanded right to the slot, and Zucker got it away from Garrison. Here comes Koivu winding and firing, and it's deflected away by Stamkos, who got back. 20 seconds to go on the penalty. And cutting in Conley, surrounded by the Wild. Minnesota surrendering a goal that first time short. They had come in, killing 20 of 22 penalties. But the Lightning denting that. Time running out of the second opportunity. Palak, stick handles in. Fires, knocked down, rebound, Kepra is stopped there. And Spurgeon gets a hold of it with a penalty expiring. Suter back in the play. Wins the puck. And he sends it out of the reach of Parisi down the ice. Icing will be the call. Boy, that puck was on edge for Palat to shoot. Yeah, he, he, he's so good at, at manipulating through traffic. There was that quick shot, and you can see that it, uh, Kemper was just glad he got in front of it because his rebound was out about five feet. Usually, he only puts him out about a foot to keep it. The quickness in which he got that shot off, even on a rolling puck. Getting his own rebound, using his speed. How about the pass up by Ben Bishop, guys? <laughs> Fired that up. Has a power play assist this year on the game-winning goal. An opening night, of course, setting up the overtime winner from Victor Hedman. Here's Grandlin scooting through the middle of the ice. His shot handled by Bishop. Strawman got a stick in there, but Bishop up to the task to get a whistle. Well, we talked about how... They uh, are second to Chicago in average shots per game. It's over 36, but they shoot from everywhere. That's one of the reasons why they've got such good totals. They don't, they don't hesitate. If there's no play to make, they put the puck on there. Very straight ahead, north-south type of team. Carl Strawman assisting on both lightning goals. Here's Kucherov stepping in. He's back to Strawman. He had not yet caught up to the play, so they'll regroup at center. Carl sends it off Johnson, sticking deep in the zone. Marco Scandella trying to poke it along. It reached Suter from the point, kept in by Barbario. Ryan Suter has it back. It's the play to Fontaine from the sharp angle. Plays it on goal, and Bishop had the stick down there. Puck comes back to Scandella. Firing Bishop a save. Rebound just eluded Fontaine. And Palat chips it out to center ice. Brown trying to stir it up in that Minnesota zone. And a Minnesota stick breaks. That was Koivu's. He's still able to glove it out of the zone. He was fortunate to do that. Wow, what a play, though. He kicked the puck up with a skate. Bucket to Gunnison deep in the attacking zone. Chased by Charlie Coyle. It's centered, but Scandella right there. Jason Zucker played a couple of years for George Gwazdecki at Denver University. Now having to play defense as Boyle and company get set up in that Minnesota zone. Scandella goes down. Lost the block, and they're going to call tripping on Boyle at 2.56, and Minnesota will get a power play chance. It'll be their second one. They had two Tampa shots. number 11, two-minute strip. Watch this here. Well, the stick did get in between the legs. I thought maybe when he's trying to take the stride when he had a stick that he stumbled after it, but no, the stick, the uh, well stick up between his skates and down he went. 
Well, one they're going to have to kill off. And see John Cooper there. Coaches do not like those penalties 200 feet away from your own net. And, you know, Niederreiter back on the ice. He was in a little bit of discomfort shaking his leg out on the bench. He hasn't played a lot. He's only played just around 10 minutes going into this third period. Looked like he was out there a lot in the first. Boy, Boo, an excellent face-off man. Wins that one. Peter Ryder to Vanek. Gave it up. As Vanek could get much on the pass. Chief mentioned he's got one goal so far this year. Peter Ryder's been their big trigger man of the power play with four of their six power play goals. Play disrupted at the lightning line. Here's Vanek stepping in. Back of the point for Koivu. Around they work it. Jared Spurgeon's pass blocked by Kalorn. Recovers his stick. Suter with a wrist shot. Slow down by Palat. Comes back to Suter. Kalorn had to drop that stick. It was broken. Koivu. Back for Suter. Wrist it. Tipped. And it's deflected wide as Palat got a piece of it. But knock it away from the net. Work free off the boards right there in Minnesota. Koivu with a drive in the traffic. That was blocked by Carl. Wild get it once again with Suter up top. Not a neater rider. Hands of the Spurge. Big wind up the shot. Slowed down. Bishop reacts. No. Now Kalorn could clear. What a save by Bishop. Puck loose and it's set wide. Kalorn could clear because he didn't have a stick. Another lightning stick broke. And the lightning get the job done with a tremendous pad save by Ben Bishop. 30 seconds on the penalty. Matt Curl went to dump the puck down the ice, and that's when his stick broke. Here's Parisi. Played back down the boards. It comes free, and here comes Brown. Spurgeon headed him off. Brown cuts in. Johnson with him. Brown takes a look. He'll eat that puck in the corner and kill more clock. Five seconds left on the Boyle penalty. Mikhail Grandlin to center. Into the zone with Parisi. Boyle back on. Palmerville to the point. Dump of the drive and it's deflected wide. Comes back to Scandella. He shoots and it's off the side of the goal off the stick. Brown with it. Lightning trying to settle things down here. As they are back to full strength. Zach Parisi puts it along. Lightning working out to Brown. Stepping in there. Scandella activating from the blue line. Palmenville takes it. Parisi. Pass intercepted by Boyle. Taps it behind Dubba. Give him a run for his money. Boyle with the reach. Dubba had the angle. Boyle gets up. And finally he's out man, but the Lightning gained control with Callahan. Beating it to Steven Stamkos. Callahan looks toward the net. Shoots. And a pad save by Darcy Kepper for the points draw. And firing, and he zips it wide. And he just missed Kalorin's stick. Stamp goes. Callahan. Wrap around. Stopped by Kepper. Two saves he covers. Wow, Just past the six-minute mark of this third period. Ben Bishop with a big save there on Niederreiter. Alex Kalorn has Tampa Bay in front. We're in the third 2-1 here at this hockey game. Although the proud Harvard alumnus in Kalorn will point out the fact that the game took place in historic Harvard Stadium earlier today when his alma mater completed a perfect season, defeated arch rival Yale to win their Ivy League football championship. Kalorn said in his college days he never missed a game, Rick and Chief, but they are always playing hockey on the weekend of the Yale game. He never got to see it. Today he dashed home, enjoyed the national televised game. Harvard goes on to win it the 17th perfect season to Kalorn's delight in the history of Crimson football. Thanks very much Paul. And Spurgeon driving it in off the end boards. Well he's celebrating with a, a goal in yet another game. Four in a row for Alex. Here's a steal. They played it. Zucker with a try and it's snuffed out there by Gudis. Boyle. Spurgeon looks, his shot is blocked by Conley. In front, Coyle fires, and it's skimmed off Radko Gunas. Bishop had no hope of seeing that one. There were three bodies in front of him. They really got to make sure they get that puck. They 
They turn it over at the blue line, and that's what created all those anxious moments there. Lightning back off. Suter able to meander into the zone and shoot a save. Bishop shrugged it off on the left shoulder. Suter follows up. It's tapped in the air. It comes back to the corner. Schuster in there after it. Kucherov plays it ahead. He had a man behind everybody. It was Andre Palat, but the pass was behind him. The Wild went to sleep on that. Here's Garrison. Left behind the net. Ballard. Hounded in there by Andre Palat. Bronziak in a battle with Schuster. Kucherov comes back to win that battle. Garrison's pass deflected. Schuster. Over for Jason Garrison. Shots are 25-24. Minnesota with the Lightning of a 2-1 lead here in this third period. Well, it took was a couple broken sticks, guys. It opened things up in the third here. <laughs> Ballard drives it in. Carl chopping it free. Stamkos said it worked off a stick. Recovered by Kalor. Taken away by Niederreiter. He's challenged by Carl. Montana rides in the corner. Niederreiter, a Swiss-born winger. Dipped overall in 2010 by the Islanders. And even though he had a fairly decent chance of playing in that team, he could get it done. They traded him for Clutterbuck. Here's Gandela shooting save by Bishop. And we get the stoppage in play. I'll tell you what, you got to start winning more battles than that along the wall. But this is what we're talking about when you're backing off the blue line. Take a look, Suter. You got, he's coming back. Nobody's there. Nobody's challenging him. Look at all the guys the Lightning got back in the zone. They got four. The defense is already back to the top of the circle before he even hits the blue line. You've got to make those plays before the blue line, especially when you're protecting a one-goal lead and you only have one offensive player coming down on you. He even got a shot away and almost had a chance on a rebound. That can't happen. Well, that and then the uh, shoulder to the head of Bishop after the initial shot. Okay, flipping it out. Brown is checked. Boyle working there. Buda's trying to grab the handle. Granlin fires it, and he sends it through the legs of Dumba. Scandella backed up the play. Pass across for Marco Scandella, trying to step inside Gudis. Garrison cut him off. Gudis' pass deflected. Tough to make a clean play out there right now. Gudis left the boards for Brown. Grabbed by Matt Dumba. Brown takes it back. He sees the Lightning are changing. Trying to delay Minnesota as much as he can. They miss on the pass there. That results in an icing call. You know, those plays like that would uh, have dropped the Lightning down to 17th defensively. Before the trip, they were like 12th. Now they're down to 17th. Minnesota, top 10 in defense. We've seen that throughout the game and how it was so difficult for the Lightning to get through the neutral zone and get it into the zone because they were stopped repeatedly at the Minnesota Blue Line. Lightning won the draw. Phil full of feeding it back. Now he's tied up. Granlin playing it ahead to Zucker. Checked by Conley effectively. Phil full of trying to lead it back for Jonathan Druan. Zucker hurried back. Another board battle. Druan trying to make a play. Checked by Granlin. Got it free to Conley. Youngster's going to work there as the old head, Phil Blow, works uh, between them. And he's got the puck now at center ice. A couple of pretty good wins by Druan there. Well, he's looking for signs from uh, young players like that, like what we've seen from Conley in a couple of situations, too. The game's coming along. Spurgeon shoots it in. Boyle. Lost it. Kucherov getting it to Palat. They're just backhanded out. Knocked out of the air by Coyle. More and more of that, guys. Just chip it out. Leave the pressure. Johnson gets to a puck in the middle of the ice. Palat chipping it in for Kucherov. It's over his shoulder. Back to Palat. Kucherov on the boards. Strawman with a quick release. And it's slowed down by Suter. He's blocked five shots in this game. And it just missed the net. Spurgeon. He's hammered in there by Andre Palat. Puck comes out to center and out of play in the Minnesota bench. 9.21 to go here in this third period. All the scoring in the second period. Lightning leading 2-1.
Just under the halfway mark in the third period. Lightning have that one goal to lead. It's time now for our diamond performance of the night. Presented by Ackerman Jewelers. And this is just a great puck retrieval. Great keep in by Alex Galorn. Goes to the net. Has the puck go off his right skate. Ricochets past Kepper. And Kalorn's sixth of the year. And has given the Lightning the lead. And has increased his goal scoring streak to four games. Boyle 5 and 2 in the circle through two periods going against Koivu, who's consistently one of the better face-off men of the NHL. Two big center digging in there, and the Wild moving out to center. Niederreier trying to get behind the defense, catches up to that puck, flips it in front. Boyle got a glove on it. Koivu down the boards. Chopped at by Brown. Scandella holds the fort. Need a rider catching up to it. Hands it now to Prosser shooting. Saved by Bishop. Puck got away initially, but he's able to cover it. And Paquette and Niederreiter jousting again. Well, he talked about that Koivu. He was 9-4 uh, and four on the faceoff through two periods. And Boyle's having a little talk as well. Koivu under the weather in their last game Thursday night in Philadelphia. He's uh, one of a number of forwards who've been struggling offensively. No goals in eight games coming in. But uh, with a guy like Niederreiter stepping up, he's made, made up for some losses with some of the other older players not producing as well as they expect. Granlin with it. Good center against Strawman. Lightning mean, got to look around now, you know, to get the guys in position, look around so that back door plays cut off. Granlin, his pass at the back of the goal. Parisi out to the point. Suited with a shot. Strawman gets to it. Sends it up the board. Spurgeon knocks it down. They dig for it there. It bounced to Parisi. Lightning hemmed in for the moment. Carl pressured in there. Strawman leaving it. Parisi takes it. Spurgeon wanted it for the one-timer. Now shoots it to a crowd. It's blocked. And it drops from Strawman to Carl. And the Lightning busted out. Here comes Callahan. Stamp goes with him. Buck rolls to Kemper. He angled it out of the zone. Lightning back on side. Gouda steps in. Big wind up. Firing Kemper. The save. No rebound. Good thing about that, you get the change. Here's the big shot. Not a real dangerous one from where he was, but the key is that the Lightning only were able to get a partial change on that rush up there. The thing of it is, with him freezing the puck now, you can get fresh bodies out there and the face-offs in the offensive zone. Well, speaking of changes, a little chitter-chatter in Minnesota Wild getting away with one there. Very close to getting to too many men on the ice. Yeah, the Lightning players were waving at the Minnesota bench as Kemper was trying to play that puck out of the zone. And apparently that's what they were calling uh, attention to. Johnson, a faceoff, went back to Barbario. Now to Palat. He fires, and it's deflected away by Scandella. Centering pass for Johnson. Walled off by Marco Scandella. Whom the Wild folks love to talk about. He's a developing star in their defense. Well, he's had a solid game. Plays with an edge, too. Talk about defensemen needing 300 games to really get their feet wet. Here's Johnson cutting in. Got to finish the move. Come on, is stopped by Kepper. And he hangs on. I'll tell you what, you watch this line out there. It's Johnson, Palat, and Kutra. They're not the biggest line, but boy, are they so hard to knock off that puck. They seem to really thrive with the plays in and around tight circles. Watch this play here. Watch Palat get there. Here's that quick shot. He's trying to get it. They moved it out, and there's Palat right there to make sure that he get a good shot away. Good job by him following it up, but he's the one that started that play, picking the pocket of Scandella, and he's been tenacious on the forecheck and battle in the offensive zone this game. Talking about Scandella, this is only his 182nd game, so he's a little ahead of the curve. <laughs> the way the development's gone for him, Kalorn knocked, or pardon me, uh, Callahan knocked down. Kalorn maneuvering to the corner, wins that puck battle. He's won some big ones tonight. One led to a goal. 
Back to one off his foot and in. Suter in the zone. Forced wide by Garrison, leaving it. Bannock with a shot. That's knocked down. We talked about Suter. He plays 20 to 30 minutes or 25 to 30 minutes a game. He's leading the rush. <laughs> he had 18 for uh, 14 in that first over the first 40 minutes he was on the ice. Dumba forced to give up the puck. Drew has it. Got at the top 10 in scoring among the rookies. In his limited role, he's made uh, quite a bit of use of it. Phil pull up. Uh, joined by Radko Gudis and Mark Barbario. Pass out for Brett Conley. He'll tap it down the boards. Scandella comes across. He engages Druan. Trying to skate off with a puck. They dribble away to Gudis. Scandella gets it back. Rifles it out of the zone. Six minutes to go here in this third period. Lightning continuing with a 2-1 lead. Alex Kalorn has the lead goal in the contest. Nico Koivu, pass out for Scandella. Barbario comes across, looking for his partner Gudis. He's slowed up in there by Niederreiter. The Lightning do get the puck out to center. Yeah, Suter at 18-14 wasn't really the most minutes. Oh. Big hit to Lott as he stole the puck from Keith Ballard. And they give it up. Kucherov with a shot, and he just sends it wide. Ballard bit off a little more than he could show. <laughs> Andre Pallant. <laughs> it's like he's 260. Ballard picks it up. Prosser back to Ballard. Dives to play that into the zone. Parisi catching up to it. Strawman with him. Play back to uh, Mikhail Granlin, bodied by Boyle, centering pass, and it's intercepted by Paquette. Parisi set to pull the trigger, and Cedric Paquette interrupted things, and now he's coming up the works in the Minnesota zone. Strawman lifts it in. Suter with it. Spurgeon starts it ahead. He'll just continue on in the zone. Rifles the pass to Coyle. On the backhand feed in front. Boyle got that puck away. Vanek with a shot. It's deflected wide. Virgin activating here with the wild down a goal. Zucker down the boards. Cut off by Garrison. Good puck battle by Jason Garrison. One of the simple things he does well that uh, Rick Bonus was talking about earlier today. Boy, and moving the puck quickly out of your zone. He does a very good job of that. There's something you talk about all the time, puck separation. Yep. One of the best at doing that, finishing his guy, creating a turnover. Pass ahead for Callahan off his skate boot. Comes back to Scandella. 3.45 to go in the third period. The pass overland for Brodziak, and Gudis getting it to the point. Held in there by Dumba. Fired in front, and it's under Bishop. The whistle blows as Niederreiter was paired off with Barbario. The puck deflected underneath Bishop, who was down and waiting for a whistle, and it finally came. I don't know how he fell down. I don't know if he was trying to move quickly or what, but he just kind of fell down, and the shot came in. It actually hit him when he was lying down. I don't think this puck was ever covered. Break for the oh, Lightning. He was hit by the forward. See the time remaining in regulation. Lightning with that one goal lead. This is how Ben Bishop ended up on the ground. There you see he gets knocked down by a Lightning player, but then the shot comes in and hits him on the arm as he was lying, lying down. Nobody was around him, or at least we couldn't see anybody around him. And how he fell down, while well, we saw now, he was, he was bumped into by a wild player, and as he was lying on the ground, that's when the shot hit him, kicked it out of the net. Now Brodziak running him over, and that's the first save Ben Bishop has made from his backside on a point shot. <laughs> It's Virgin off a face-off win, getting it down the boards to Niederreiter. Garrison defending, got the puck free. Schuster. Wild forcing the issue in that attacking zone. Niederreiter has it at center. He's checked by Filpola. Koivu hands it down to Spurgeon. He'll hammer it in. Harrison over there for it. Brodziak, a big body at 210 pounds. Going to work on the four check here for Minnesota. 
Once again working against Garrison. Schuster gets it free. Bill Flynn tied up there with Spurgeon. Spurgeon out of that corner. Schuster using his reach. Brodziak fires in the slot. The shot by Niederreiter's block. Backed up. Suter's try deflected away by Conley. Lightning once again hemmed in. Gonna hang on here and finally it's worked free by Phil, but I got tugged at by his former Finnish national teammate there, Koivu, and tests Kemper and plays the puck down the boards. Palai taking on Suter. Koivu gets to the center. Pommetville trying to chop it in. It deflects off a Lightning player and out of play. 2.17 to go in the third. Tonight's broadcast code of the game is power. Visit lightningfanrewards.com and enter tonight's code of the game. Remember, fans, the more you play, the more you can win. Well, Minnesota played a very tightly contested game against the Flyers on Thursday night. They had the game tied on them with just seconds to go, and then they actually ended up winning in overtime with just seconds to go. Buck stolen. Zucker walks in. Centers in front. Strollman tied up his man, Vanek. And prevented that shot from being taken by one of the most dangerous men against the Lightning in history. I don't know if anybody scores against Tampa Bay like Thomas Vanek has. Dumba in a hurry. Boyle. Swings into the zone. Strawman waiting there to relieve him of the puck. What a game he's played tonight. Kucherov. And a step around Scandella. Scandella takes him out. Takes the puck away. Now behind the play, we've got a penalty upcoming to the Lightning. Here's a shot by Scandella, saved by Bishop. Scandella fires it front. Bishop tipped it away, but didn't control it. Scandella with it. Johnson got tangled up behind the play with Dumba. I think it's coming from that. Scandella hammers it into a crowd. Bishop a stop. Rebound off the side of the goal. Lightning control. Cross check there by Zucker on Garrison. Let's see if we get an even out situation. Guna's going to work. Along the back of the lightning net with Coyle. Johnson can't believe it, but I think he's going to get called. <laughs> no, he's the only one that can't believe it. Chief, I don't like jumping in very much on this, but that is a terrible, terrible call at this time of the game. Just a battle up the ice. They've been going back and forth. What what, interference there? Wait, wait a minute. Who's getting the interference? Oh, there's a... They're both... <laughs> and that after you missed the goaltender the interference. And that's the same guy that was standing there, too. Tom Cowell standing right there watching the goalie interference. Now Johnson's getting a holding call here at 1843. Minnesota's third power play. They're 0 for 2. Well, it's going to be quite a reaction here from the crowd because they're showing the play <laughs> on Lightning Vision. And the sellout crowd of 19,204. They've seen a little different game than we've seen on many nights here in the home schedule with a lot of goals usually, but tightly played. Minnesota timeout here with a big power play opportunity for the Wild, their third chance. And down 2-1 to one with 1.17 to go in the third period. Be sure to tune in Wednesday. Marty St. Louis returns to Tampa to take on the Lightning. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. with Lightning Live pregame. The Bolts and the Rangers Wednesday night right here at Sun Sports. The thing about that whole play is that you have Dumba interfering with Johnson coming up. And then Johnson interfering with Dumba. At least a double minor. But as you pointed out, Chris, just over a minute to go, you, you let both of them go. The well, play was way up at that far blue line anyway. Yeah, it's one of those things they call nothing play, but you know, the one positive of that, and you, you touch on it quite a bit, Chief, the importance of winning faceoffs. Being down a man, Brian Boyle can win that faceoff back. Garrison, a left-handed shot. He can hammer around the boards. And we'll see what happens here. This faceoff man from each side contesting. Koivu gets it to Suter. Pommetville in a point position. Randlin up to Suter. Paquette trailing him. Pass down low. Parisi out in front. And Vanek was upset there by Garrison. Scrambled on for the puck. And it's sent around to Pommetville. Suter. Under a minute to go in the third period. Suter the drive. It's wide of the net. Kept wide by Strong.
Strawman and Bishop. Wild get it back. Sooner. Boyle on him. The pass across. That was read by Garrison. The Wild hold it in. Bouncing puck. Greasy gets to it. Bombinville protects it. Now Suter up top. 35 seconds. Now to Bombinville. Closing in. Resting it into a crowd. Stopped by Bishop. Covers the puck. 28 seconds to go in the third. Wow. Well, looking into the start of that, this whole play here was a one face-off by Koivu. There you see that deflection right off of Strawman, but Ben Bishop in great position to be able to make sure the puck hit him and then cover up for the face-off. Lightning were two for four shorthanded coming into this period. They lost that one. Great stick play by Jason Garrison on that attempted cross-ice pass, guys. Koivu and Boyle once again, and Koivu gets... The face-off back to Suter, shooting into a crowd, it's blocked as Boyle and Paquette both there, Pommetville feeding it across, now back to Suter, still rippling again, deflected just wide, picked up by Pommetville, 14 seconds, Suter, Randlin, fires in front, deflected, it slowed down when it just dribbles wide off the stick, back to Suter, now to Koivu, moving it to Grandlin, fires it back to Suter, closing it and shooting, blocked by Paquette, quick free, there's the horn! And the Lightning hang on! Alex Gillard's goal late in the second, the difference, but what a third period. Ben Bishop with an outstanding performance. 30 stops in this one as the Lightning win this by the count of 2-1. to one. And end the two-game losing streak. They end the Wilds' winning streak at four games. We'll return with four from Amelie Arena. 30 points of the season for the Tampa Bay Lightning.